is it about this show that still gets you as excited as anything else you do? Yeah, no, I, you, you know, you, you bring in the best unsigned guys in these different weight classes, and you come in, and, and I say it all the time, I don't care what you did, but before, whatever you did before this got you in the door, it's what you do tonight. And, and every time, I mean, th this show delivers. I was talking to, you know, seven years now, 350 fights that we've had now on the Contender Series. So, um, yeah, I, I love this. I love, uh, I, I was just talking to, uh, to Kevin's uh, trainer out there, and he was telling me, you know, this kid's, uh, you know, he's 25 years old. He said he grew up very, very poor. Poor like we can't imagine, and it's all been about fighting. He was going to be a professional fighter someday. And when, when you hear that story about this kid, you, you could see it tonight. He went in there with a guy who was actually bigger and stronger than him. He came in on short notice. He's a three-to-one underdog. Once this kid tasted his power and, and, and the combinations that this kid was putting on him, um, uh, Diaz wanted nothing to do with that. He, he tried to hold him down. Wanted to keep him down. This kid kept getting up, and every time he'd get up, he'd unload. Um, you know, a very tough dog fight. You know, he was in tonight, and he looked damn good. I really like this kid a lot, and I'm excited about him. But my, that's the shit that I love, those type of stories and, and the way these kids fight. And then you look, you, you look at this kid, Peyton, and what you could see tonight, first of all, how, how tough is Cortez, Jr.? I mean, this kid's so tough. Took some big shots. But you look at a kid like Peyton tonight, again, 24 years old. If this kid keeps his head together, he's special. You see it here tonight. You look at the guys that have come up through the Contender Series and, 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 and you know, what they're doing now in the UFC. It's just, I love this shit. <laughs> how, how, how challenging is tonight, right? Because you had a lot of decisions. I mean, like Tom Nolan... No brainer, right? Goes out there and throws a highlight reel. We could all we could all write that contract. But the decisions, like how much more challenging is it for you to go like, yeah, we're gonna give this guy a shot versus you know they didn't have the highlight reel finish. Yeah, well, I didn't like the heavyweight fight. I didn't like the heavyweight fight at all. Like I said, it's not the most exciting fight of the night. But when you when you look at Machado, he was an underdog, right? And he beat a guy who was on an 11 fight win streak and beat him easily. I mean. I don't know what his significant strikes were tonight, but it, it was a big number, too. So how do you deny the guy? He came in and, you know, if he just beat a guy that was an average guy, he beat a guy on an 11-fight win streak. Guy hasn't lost a fight since his first fight and did it easily, so you take him. And then, the, you know, the last guy is the other guy that you would question. I'm not looking for 35-year-old contenders, but. 47 wins in kickboxing with 27 knockouts. Now he's got four. He's 4-0 in MMA with three knockouts. And if you look at the fact that he came from a, a kickboxing background and look at what he overcame tonight. He was down on the ground. He was, you know, he was in the bottom position. He got back up. I mean, he fought a hell of a fight for a guy who's 35 and has fought his whole career in kickboxing. Yeah. So out of respect, I'm giving this kid a shot. I like it. Uh, the start of this week is a pretty banner week for the UFC Apex, right? I mean, there's, there's all <laughs> kinds of stuff going on here. I mean, is Yeah, well, it's a fun week. You know, tonight, which ended up being awesome, uh, now we roll right into the Ultimate Fighter. Power slap tomorrow. They got to rip this whole thing down and rebuild for tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, fight night on Saturday. It's a fun week. Do you envision more weeks like this where there's multiple things happening all week long? It's all coming, man. I, I got a lot of plans coming up over the next uh, two, three years, and we're going to be using this place a lot. Nice. A couple quick ones just outside tonight. Uh, the fans in Australia were killing us about finding out when they were getting a main event. You announced it today. I guess relieved, or what's the feeling to finally have a main event for the fans down there? Well, it's, it's, it's the main event we've, we've had for, for, for a while here. We, we knew it was, just, it was just a matter of when we were going to announce it. Um, yeah. Yeah, good. Nice. Happy, yeah. <laughs> Last week for me, I did one as you talked about the Ultimate Fighter wrapping up. Any updates on Conor McGregor, his situation? There seems to be all this discussion, like, is this fight between him and Chandler going to happen? Are there different yeah. directions? I talked to Conor, uh, it was either yesterday or the day before. And, uh, yeah, he, he's ready to fight. You know, it's just I said, listen, get in shape and let's figure this out. There's still definitely Chandler? Yeah, 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 he's fighting Chandler. Conor likes to fuck with everybody, you know what I mean? <laughs> especially his opponent, or possible opponents. Yeah. Uh, tonight, I thought Tom Nolan was a standout, right? You know, he came in there, massive, lightweight, had great hands, and he was pissed off at the guy, and you could see it. I'm curious what you thought about his performance. Yeah. Think about that, right? So he is 
six foot three, 155 pounds. You know, he's a, he's a monster. And obviously, he's, he, he's, uh, he can strike. He's powerful. He's going to be fun to watch. Again, another kid. You keep your head together. You, you do the right things. Bright future ahead of him. We've seen that before, right? I think that's probably one of the most underrated things about being a professional fighter and you get to this stage. If you're a young guy and you find success early, it can be tricky to keep your head together. Is that something that you try and tell them early on? Like, hey, guys, don't fuck it up, basically. It's the hardest thing to do. Um, I was just watching this, this uh, clip of Muhammad Ali the other day on Instagram, and he was being interviewed, and they were asking him, what's the toughest part of, of uh, being a fighter? Is it, is it the training? Is it the this? Is it the that? And Muhammad Ali says, it's the women <laughs> and the partying. He says, you know, when everybody's out having fun and, you know, living, living it up, I, I'm, I'm going to bed at 9 o'clock and waking up and training the next day. It's the truth. It's, it's, if, if you can keep your head together and, you know, as, as you start, some people deal with fame really well and some people deal with it the exact opposite. So if you can keep your head together and, and, and stay focused with the amount of talent that we see on this show, who knows what the possibilities are. You guys offer them the PI, right? And nutrition and everything. Is that something you ever think about maybe offering them like therapists to help them with fame or anything? Is that something you can see the UFC offering guys? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess if somebody really needed it, we would. It's, it's just, I, I don't think it's one of those things that you can, you either can or you can't. You know what I mean? I mean, how many, how many fighters do we have under contract now? 656 guys going to go through therapy and girls go through therapy, I mean, to deal with fame? Uh, it's just, it's not a reality, but um, you can either do it or you can't. Outside of this one, I was with Nate Diaz last week, and he was very complimentary about the UFC. He said he missed the UFC. I know that he said he wants to come back. Is that something that you reach out to him, or do you wait and see if he reaches out to you? Well, we, we feel the same way about Nate. You know, always have. You know, I've always joked around about dealing with the Diaz brothers, but, um, you know, th th these two, you see it now. I mean, th they're two iconic fighters that 20 years from now, everybody will remember and, and, and talk about. And, you know, um, this will always be Nate's house, you know. Nate, Nate grew up here. He came in on the Ultimate Fighter. You know, he fought some of the biggest fights ever here. And, you know, we'd love the kid. I, I don't know about fighting in the future, but this is always going to be his house. And, you know, we'll see. Did you enjoy his guillotine that he got in the 10th round? Did I what? Did you enjoy his guillotine that he got on Jake? <laughs> I saw it on the Internet, yeah. I, you know, um, for, for, for a kid pushing 40 years old, fighting a guy four weight classes bigger than him in boxing and two in MMA, and going the distance, you know what I mean, at his age against a fucking 20-something-year-old kid, he, so far he, he's, he's, he's fared the best, you know, out of everybody. He, he looked good. I'm happy for him. And last one for me, after a night like tonight, I know that this is probably one of your favorite things you do, the Contender Series, but after tonight, you see the fights that you have. How excited are you for the next nine weeks? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how many more times I can say it or how many different ways I can say it. I, I love this show. I love coming over here on Tuesdays. I love walking in with a clean slate and not knowing anything about anybody and watching what they do. You know, I, I fucking love this show. I love this show. That's all I can say. I mean, I don't, I don't know how many different ways I can say it. I love it. Over here. Yeah. Oh. So uh, you seem pretty adamant about Peyton Talbot. Um, I saw that you stopped him after you'd won his fight when he was going to the back. What words did you tell him? Yeah, I was telling him that, that he broke the record for significant strikes in that weight class. And, uh, yeah, that was it. Does he remind you of another tall bantamweight fighter that came through the contender series one day? Ask me that again. Does he remind you of another tall bantamweight fighter that yeah, won yeah. the contender series? Yeah, well... I mean, the, the, the way that that kid fought tonight, I mean, um, he's only 23 years old. He looked like a straight killer tonight. I mean, you, when you talk about what I'm looking for, uh, you know, on nights like tonight, you couldn't perform better and you couldn't pull it off better than he did tonight. He, he looked incredible. Hey, Dana. Yep. Um, someone with, with, with Cesar Almeida, right, you said he's 35 years old, but he's had this big kickboxing history. 
what do you do with him? Like, do you, is that, is he someone like Alex Pereira where you kind of rush him? Because, I mean, he's fought Alex, right? So, like, what do you do with him? Here's the thing about him. He was in some bad positions tonight that a guy with, you know, 50-something kickboxing fights you'd think would be in big trouble. Totally composed, like a vet and a pro. Took his time, worked his way out of positions, never freaked out, never panicked. Uh... I think he's a guy, first of all, he's not a guy, you know, at his age that you sit on and try to, you know, move around. You, you, you bring him in and, and you, you throw him in there. He's got the experience. He looked damn well-rounded tonight to me. We'll see what he's got when he gets in the UFC. But like I said, this is a guy, I'm not looking for 35-year-old contenders, but you have to respect the man, uh, his resume and what he did here tonight. So he's going to get a shot. Um, we haven't talked to you since... UFC 291, uh, what were your thoughts on Poirier versus Gaethje 2 and then Alex Pereira's win? Um, yeah, obviously, I mean, uh, Poirier Gaethje 2 was awesome. I mean, the, the, the fight was awesome and the, uh, the card was incredible. I was on vacation watching it on TV, but you could feel the energy through the TV from, from Utah. And, you know, things that I look at, for obviously, our production was flawless that night. The show was incredible, and uh, the fighters all went out. When we do what we do best and they do what they do best, you pull off a perfect event like Utah was. Um, is Gaethje probably next in line? And I, I, have, and I, I don't even. Is Alex Pereira next in line for the vacant title? We'll see. We'll announce, we'll announce soon here what's, what's next. Um, Wonderboy said that he wasn't paid for, uh, for, for showing up. Is that something – new in the contracts where like you don't have to make weight and, and get your show money or be, he, he also said that he didn't talk to you yet so right so how that works is guys don't just get paid to not fight it's not how that works guys have been paid we've taken care of guys hey, listen if you come in and you're making short money we take care of you. you come in and you don't fight first of all you you decided not to fight the guy was three pounds overweight whatever it was you get a piece of his purse if you take the fight but if you, deter, you decide you don't want to take the fight, we also offered him another fight. You know, there's a much bigger story behind the scenes. Um, and no, you don't just show up and say, yeah, I'm not going to fight. I want a quarter of a million dollars. It's not the way it works. It, does, it hasn't worked that way for anybody. So what we do is we try to get you another fight. We try to turn you around quickly. If you don't turn around quickly, then we try to figure out, well, what, what, was, what did it cost for your camp? We'll reimburse you. You know, there's a lot of different ways that this gets worked out. You don't just go, yeah, this guy's three pounds over, I'm not going to fight, and no, I won't take another fight two weeks later and pay me my show money. Not how it works. You don't fight, you don't get paid uh, necessarily in the contract. But we always make sure that we take care of everybody, and, you know, uh, we're working it out with Wonder Boy right now. It's all being worked out uh, behind the scenes, and this should all be worked out by Saturday. Gotcha. Um, and then finally, there was a Cosm um, event, and – Utah, the big, big show, I think it's Cosm, I, I might be, um, is, I mean, is that the future of fighting? Um, obviously, you weren't there, but you did a little pre-package and kind of inter introduced it. Um, to what? What are we talking about? The, the Cosm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you guys go to that? Yes. How badass is that? So, they came and filmed at, at one of the, I saw other events. I haven't seen our event in Cosm yet. I saw like a soccer game and a basketball game and things like that. But yeah, yeah, I, I think that if you can't get out to a live event and that's in your hometown, yeah, Cosm is the way to go. You go in there with some friends and, and, uh, and, and watch it live. And that, I think, is an incredible experience. Yeah. Um, I mean, is, is that going to be something that, that you're going to try and put on? Um, I guess. Well, yeah, we have a deal with them. So, yeah, we, we've, we have a deal. And, uh, you know, I don't know how fast those places are going to pop up or where they're going to be or any of that stuff, but it, it's a hell of an experience. Is that a hint that there might be fights at the MSG sphere? Um, well, I, 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 listen, we're, 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 we're in a deal right now with MGM, but, yeah, I, the, I haven't seen the inside of the sphere yet, but the outside is, you know, all the hype, that everybody was talking about that place. I think that they actually over-delivered on, you know, you don't want to oversell anything. There's no way to oversell the sphere. 
It, it's one of the coolest fucking things that I've ever seen. And uh, I was landing the other day from being out of town, and that thing was lit up. It's unbelievably impressive. Thanks, Dana. Yeah. Good? Thank you, guys.